So there was some interest to discuss more. I'm open for any questions you are interested in. And when we are finished with that for now, then we think about doing one more piece of a different chapter so, so that we can get through the whole program, I guess. You would not like to miss one of the chapters. And I wanted to ask you around your um, definition of didactic. <coughs> you have used that term a wee bit of, um, <coughs> in some of your concepts, you said they were didactic. Um, Is that okay? Yes, yeah. certainly. In, in Germany, we have a classical understanding of didactics. This is like preparation school lessons. But the modern understanding of didactic is uh, who, how, when of learning. Oh. It's a very uh, open main issue on how do we organize learning. Right. And this has a part, and here's a dialogue model of communication comes in. This has a, a structured, methodological conscious part mm -hmm. and I think at the same time it should set the stage for all that intuitive learning and resonances of the souls uh, that make learning integrated into us in the, into, into the individuals and make it human make it a culture I was thinking of didactic um Prior to knowing that, it was more lecture type. Uh, I was distracted. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, okay. Again, please. Why I asked was in my um, thinking up until a <coughs> few minutes ago was it didactic being quite lecture like? Deliver, yes, that's, a, that's also in Germany, it's a classical yeah. understanding. Right. But uh, that's classical. Yes. The new one is much more open. Is, these are any qualified, the answers to any qualified questions around how to organize le learning, how to build up on a learning culture. Yeah. This is all that. And you, if, if it doesn't just happen, but if you try to make it happen, this is a question of the didactic, of making, uh, the art of making it happen. I thought about taking a different word for that, but uh, usually I um, some of the diff of the words um, are now um, used for a narrow understanding of things, and then you can, in order not always to step into these narrow understandings, you could use a new word, or you could use the old word and redefine it again to make it more open and sometimes one or sometimes the other is better but I, I most often decide to stick to classical notions yes. but revitalize them. Mm. 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 We oh, that's me. Other questions and comments on what we had so far? I thought it was more than you can just can. You're still inhaling <laughs> for a long question. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, I, I was thinking what, about what we, we, we were talking about just before the, just before the, yeah. uh, the break in here. And, and um, um, about the contract contracting process with organizations yes. um, in terms of, uh, I, I think contract in, in TA terms is a very effective tool because it, it takes into account and into consideration uh, the, the, three, the three partners in a way. 
And I was thinking, uh, um, I, I was wondering, uh, because there should be a specific sequence in contracting that not everybody is following, I was wondering how much do you emphasize in your uh, training or in your work with the people or with organizations the need of the contracting of the, the, the persons who invite you or your firm to, to do training inside um, to do a very clear contract with the organizational groups with whom you are going to be working with organizational sectors mm -hmm. and at what uh, stage of the process you, you, you do this. I don't know if my question is clear. Yes. Okay. Yes. It's a complex world you address with your, with your similar question. Uh, I start with uh, talking about training and the TA idea of contracts. I all, when I'm asked in the groups, do we know, do we know how to make a, a proper TA contract? I say, if you tend not to do, yes. Mm -hmm. If you know how to do it, you don't have to do it the way you learned it. For me, contracting is just a, a specific setting or a specific kind of organization of the idea of on the way always mutually clarifying what do we have to take in account, yeah. whom do we have to involve, yeah. what can we agree <coughs> upon to do, mm -hmm. how can we renew our shared reality on what and how to do. Mm. And in organizations this means uh, before the background of organizational cultures and structures and uh, how organizations, how that what we want to do in organizations can be influenced. Um, mm. If this has to do with power mm -hmm. uh, uh, and has to be tied into strategy and all that, we certainly should, should think about that. Mm. And um, I don't have a clear policy on that. When I meet somebody of a, of a company, I try to find out, and we'll later come to a, a controlling triangle, whether we kind of focus mm -hmm. uh, that makes sense and for which we have all key players on board. Mm -hmm. So we have to clarify for this focus every, every influence we need to come to a result. Uh, if we have a focus, uh, and often we are invited to, to do work on a focus where the key players and influences that are necessary to understand how we can do that are not yet in the frame of reference, mm -hmm. not in the beginning of mine and not yeah. in the, per the person who wants to hire me. And so it's a question of dialoguing to f finding somehow of a starting point that makes sense mm -hmm. uh, and um, with the idea what we can accomplish with the resources we have so far in mind or mm -hmm. find out uh, very often we do what um, in TA is called working agreement. We agree how to find out. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay, I'll, I'll be a little bit more specific, yes. if, if I may, because when when uh, he was presenting his uh, issue I yeah. mean, in, in your uh, uh, educational conversation, yes. um, um, one of the things that I was thinking about while you were working, and it yes. was interesting to me the way you dealt with it, was partly connected with a contracting part, mm -hmm. the way I see it, where the uh, general director, it was not clear what the general director had made in terms of a contract with his human resource uh, right. director. Right. Uh, what was the agreement between them? Yes. Uh, and and so the risk for him, the way yes. I, I thought in my own uh, right. thinking, was to be right. uh, squished in between a struggle power of, right. of the two. Uh, so what, what I was thinking was, I, one of the areas I would have investigated in my way of thinking and approach is what, what kind of contract agreement work 
the general director had made with the human resource director. Yes. At least explicitly, then, of course, you know, it, it, it's all in the system. You yes. see how it's working, etc. Yes. And I was noticing that it, it was not your focus, really. Your focus was much more his relationship with all the parts of the system. No, I, I also had to focus in to ask the general director uh, if what he thinks what could happen in the relationship with the HR director yeah, will yeah, happen, yeah, how how then he will look at that and okay. uh, whether he, uh, <coughs> yeah, okay. not in order to clarify how, how his contract was, but if they will run into problems, mm -hmm. how to deal with that then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is... You can say it's a kind of contract with yes, yes, with the with a general manager. Yes. Okay. Okay. And it's only if he is not aware of that he has to be clear about what he what his relation is to the HR director. This might be an inspiration. Yeah, on something. But it's on. not. Um, you should. I think you should not to be too ed educational. Mm -hmm. to, uh, only to be safe on your contract. To mm -hmm. clarify that, because you don't have, no, you're not invited to clarify their relationship. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I have found very effective, and not many people underline, underline it usually to think in terms of the sequence of the contracts. Now there is yes. a process in contracting, yes. but the sequence needs to be clear. Uh, which the first one is with the consultant and the, yes. the person who, com who asks for the consultancy, yeah. and bef before and the second one must be before the third one, the second one must be with the the, the, the head or the responsible and the, the group of the groups to whom the consultancy is being addressed. Mm -hmm. uh, because if, if this is not, it's not clear, it's not spelled right. out or stated, etc., right. the, 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 the consultant that comes in really finds himself to have to deal with many more issues than before to be able to address yes. what he has been called for. I, I agree, mm. uh, and so you, cer you certainly could clarify all these relationships in terms of contracts. Mm -hmm. But somehow, uh, you also cannot do too much. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they have the feeling, oh, when I call him as a consultant, we have so much of work of yeah. clarifying, that's too much. So it's always a balance, what is necessary as a minimum, mm -hmm. that he can work, and uh, has a chance to to have a good effect that motivate people to want to learn more and are interested in investing more into clarification like this. Yeah, yeah, okay. There is also the problem that contracting is often a piece a piece of work which is not paid for. So mm -hmm. you can end up doing a lot of work oh. which provides oh. excellent consultancy, but you don't get paid for it. <laughs> it's taken a lot of I time. never did that. I, no, I make no, very, I make very yes, clear. Yes, I I Thank charge you. you from the beginning, yeah. and if we do not come to a contract, it's fine. You just pay the time yeah, up exactly. to then, mm -hmm. because some companies say, "Oh, let's come this and that," and yeah, everybody has to offer time. me something. We learn a lot, and then we can go. Yeah. And I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I never same. accepted that. Yeah. I do the same, but it's very shocking to companies in this country mm -hmm. because yeah. they're like. Okay. As, and as long as I have enough customers, they have to live with it. <laughs> <laughs> if if you if you if you explain it to them, they usually understand and accept. Or you can say, okay, we define very clearly a, pi a first piece that is free, and when it's Ending. And then you have to make up your mind up to then. So invite responsibility on the first piece. Uh, it doesn't have to be money. <coughs> but I am in the market situation that I say, if you come to me, you know why you come to me. I don't. You have to pay me from the beginning. I'm not in the stage that I have to offer you, you a lot of things for free in order to, to get a contract. But if you are a beginner... You might, you sh might have a different situation, but you should be very clear about where the cut point is for you and tell people. Mm -hmm. so otherwise, you get exploited. Yeah, I usually tell people what I will not charge them for the first meeting, of course, yes. not, but then the following by the hour. 
and then yeah. uh, when the contact is made, yeah. uh, a different. I even package. touched the first meeting. I never, oh. never did something I free. The first meeting. Yeah, right. Yeah, so just different model. <laughs> and yeah. did you come to that uh, by trial and error, or by experience? Yes, yeah, by trial and error. Yeah, by okay. being cheated enough. <laughs> often, <laughs> o- often enough. <laughs> In China says the thing, if, you, if they cheat you once, yeah. uh, then you are a victim. If they cheat you more than once, then they're doing right to you. <laughs> they're teaching you new things. <laughs> and it has to do with the matureness of the organization. So we we are uh, we are setting up more in the second year of our training. We do uh, we do workshops in the classical scenes so or working together on projects. Mm-hmm. And um, in order to find out uh, what are sufficient resources for this workshop between participants, and what can be accomplished through a piece of work of two hours by peer learning. We have first to find out how mature is the person as a professional to set up projects and how mature is the organization in which the person wants to work. And we have subcategories to define this maturity. Because uh, if the, the, the group member is not very mature on directing change, and the company is not mature in knowing how what change is about and what the roles are and responsibilities and time frames and so on, then it's a total different situation. As if the person knows how to do change, has already done change processes, and the organization is also experienced. Um, and we often have the problem that said participants are already in important roles, but they are not qualified. They personally, personal, professionally not mature to fill that role, mm. but no, nobody knows in the organization because the organization was not mature. This is why they have hired this person for that. And then they started, a, 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 and the, the less mature they are, the biggest projects, and the first they have already uh, proceeded without really knowing what they're doing. If uh, if everybody's mature, then you can do an easy workshop and supervision, and you can deal with the content and all that, because they are early enough. The person can present the project clearly, understands what we are saying to the person. As there's hope if they bring it back to the organization, the organization is mature enough. To understand the person has enough authorization and power within the organization to be heard and all that. And you can, within an hour, do wonderful work. And if all that is not together, or many parts are not together, you have a total different situation. But the participant thinks if he will be trained in such a workshop, afterwards he knows how to do a a project, a change project. And this cannot be promised. And so we, we, uh, we, on the other side, we can, in the first year, we mainly focus on personal control as a professional, in professional roles. In the second year, also, people are not, may not be very good in playing their roles. We still focus through their roles on the organizations they are working with. We do not accept that they always uh, two years they are only busy with their self-understanding and self-controlling. Uh, through not perfect self-controlling, they still should do and have to do something in their companies. But it's difficult to organize a learning process because it's going through, um, it, it's working with, with leverages that uh, itself are not working fine. So it's a to organize an adequately learning experience, especially if there is not always a teacher involved, but it's peer learning. Mm. And it has to be prepared didactically in a way the peer group can manage it really. So that's a, a difficult thing of 
building up an adequate didactic and uh, we have to develop our didactic further on that because we had the experience that sometimes it was wonderful and sometimes mm-hmm. it fell into part and nobody was really clear why it didn't work and So in the second year, Vern, the students or the trainees pick a project um, to work on within their work, within the organisation. Yes, we have already projects usually. Average age is 40 of our right. students. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Lovely. Mm-hmm. One of the things we've done here is the students together have found a project right. to do locally as a group of students. That's been quite interesting. Yeah. It could be within a community organisation. Yeah, in fact, we found a local cafe that was struggling. Um, mm. Oh, okay. They worked with the local cafe. Oh, here? Yeah. 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 Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, it was, it was interesting. It was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And that's in year two, Rosemary. No, for us, that's year. That was year. They've done a. a a year's foundation and then two years of organisational two years. So it's the beginning of the next year. Yeah. 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 Okay. Can we go and uh, proceed to the mm-hmm. dilemma? Mm-hmm.